you know, the world has changed incredibly uh, in the last number of years. Even people like me who have come out of a, the Christian religion have experienced an evolution of the way we see the world and the way we uh, think about people and the way we think about that which transcends all God or the universe or whatever name you like to give it. We, we think differently about things. It's not that we have rejected necessarily one set of teachings. It's just that we have been enlightened to a, a greater understanding, a, a, a bigger picture, if you would, if you could, uh, you could call it, of how the world works. And so we, we, many of the beliefs that perhaps we had, they were spe specifically very, uh, very tribal or, or somehow another accentuated my group, my tribe ahead of others that we have had to let go of and learn to become more inclusive and more accepting of others and actually see even as people may have different ideas and thoughts about things. And not only that, not only when it comes to spirituality and religion, but also to take into consideration such things as science and the things that we know about science and how that apply to God. So we, we have opened our minds to see things. And that's the point that I'm trying to make here. We have opened our minds to see things beyond that uh, religious culture that we were raised. It doesn't mean that we dismissed all parts of that culture because it's, in, in my particular case, um, coming out of the Christian tradition, I still value and love Jesus. Uh, not because he's some kind of a person up there to worship. No, because I consider myself a follower of Jesus. When I say follower of Jesus, I'm not just talking about somebody who has created this image of a person who Jesus is that kind of fits in with my theology. That's not what I'm referring to. I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the virtue that Jesus expressed. Now, Jesus lived in a different time, a different era, a different tradition, a different culture, all of that. So I'm talking about the virtue that Jesus exemplified and expressed. And that virtue, of course, was this incredible sense of love and for all people. You know, some of the things that he said is just mind boggling. He said, uh, love your enemies. I mean, how do you do that, first of all? And do good to those that hate you. Pray for those that spitefully use you. I don't think too many Christians, if you you probably agree with me, not too many Christians follow that today. Uh, Jesus did some incredible things and exemplified this love and spoke of that he was one with the Father. And then he kind of said, I'm one with you. You are one with me. He, he talked about this kingdom of God not being somewhere far away, but being inside each and every one of us. But we were not aware of it. And so Jesus, in many ways, did not present religion or the Christian religion like we are taught today. It's almost like it's a different type of God that he's talking about. And so a lot of us who came out of that, we still admire Jesus at the same time. We also consider such things as science, evolution, uh, it's hard to believe that the earth was created in six days or the universe was created in six days. And it's hard to believe that it was it happened 6,000 years ago. It's just too much evidence to the contrary. And, and, and so we don't believe that. It's hard for many of us to believe that uh, God caused a flood and all the animals of the world gathered inside one boat. Uh, I mean, just to give you an example, 180,000 different types of species of insects alone in the world. So I don't know if you throw all those in there as well. You need a lot of mosquito uh, repellent, I'm sure of it. Or, you know, it, it's hard for us to fathom. And if you include all the animals and all the species, it just doesn't seem to fit with what we now know about the world. So there are a lot of things like that that challenges us when it comes to the Christian religion. At the same time, the virtue, as I said, the virtue that we see of love, compassion, kindness toward your fellow man, this new way of seeing things, being inclusive and tolerant toward everyone. Jesus, when he spoke about the light, 
he didn't see us say that I'm the light of the world. He said, you are the light of the world. And he was very inclusive when he spoke to people from many different cultures, from many, many different religions when he, sh when he spoke those words. So we see there is something about Jesus that we like. At the same time, there is something about religion that's very confusing because in many ways it is contrary to science, what we know today about science. And, and I, in the last number of years, I have made a choice, a, a conscious choice, to uh, be Christian in the sense of virtue, but at the same time follow where the evidence of science leads us without fear, without uh, hesitation. It would be foolish. And I, people say, well, how can you trust science? Well, you trust science when you get on an airplane. You trust science every day when you use your phone, when you're watching this video. You trust science in so many ways, when you drink the water uh, that comes out of the tap. And when, when you're, uh, you, you, you trust science when you have to rush to the hospital and, and, and you're not feeling well, or when you, there are so many ways that you have to rely on science. So to suggest that science is no good is, is quite frankly, uh, doesn't make sense. I think that's that's the least I can say because we use it all the time. So we don't just pick and choose whenever we like it. Of course, science can be wrong from time to time, but science makes, you know, the way the science is set up is that it has theories about how the world works, and then they go about to prove those theories either right or wrong. So sometimes those theories are proven wrong, but in many cases also proven right. But when it comes to religion, we just say, this is the way it is. This is, we just believe this is the way it is without any kind of a logical thinking and without any kind of logical debate. The point is this, that we have to be honest enough to consider science. And so in the beginning, when, when, when you talk about spiritual things, science was then uh, compared to, um, you know, we, we learn about evolution, of course, and that feels like a threat to how we see the world. And of course, evolution in, a, in many ways then remove God from the equation. And that makes people like us who believe in, in something bigger than ourselves and believe in, in some transcendent reality that has the foundation, that, that is the foundation of all things. Uh, maybe not in the traditional God that is upstairs somewhere in, in some place that we don't know where it is beyond the galaxies. We're not talking about that, but we're believing some kind of a transcendent uh, reality, a formless consciousness, you could call it, something that kind of undergirds all reality and is the cause of the universe and that holds it all together. Uh, and so in the beginning, when evolution came out, of course, we, uh, revolution just said, well, this just happened by chance. It just, you know, everything happened by chance. But the more we learn, we realize that that's not probably the case. And then, of course, we learn about quantum physics and quantum phys physics tell us, tells us about, the, uh, the, you know, the particles and atoms and molecules and cells. And we begin to see how all these things are very, very intriguing and very confusing. For example, an atom can be in you right now, and the next moment it can be on, on the moon and uh, without actually traveling the distance. And, and two atoms in your body can suddenly split apart, and um, one can find itself on Mars and still know what's happening to you with, or to the to the one that is in you or that is some other place and know and they keep track of one another, keep tap of one another, what's going on without having any kind of communication as far as we know. So how is this possible? How do you explain all of that? How do you explain consciousness? Now, people say there's something, you know, some neuroscientists say there's some things in your brain that goes on, but you know, and that causes this firing and that causes consciousness. But then, um, Many other scientists say that's not the case either. They seem to suggest that there is one consciousness, one consciousness in the universe, and we all have a share in that consciousness, like we are uh, drops in the water, we're all the or all drops in the ocean, where all the ocean is in us, and uh, but we're still a drop. And so, so there are so many different ways of seeing these things and talking about these things. And, 
and being open-minded about things. And, and so this is what, what I try to do in everything that we have put together is to create a forum where we, we accept all those different things, but at the same time, the over aching goal of it all or the vision of it all is to make the world a better place. When I began to do this soul searching and looking at how the world works and considering the bigger questions of life, there was one prevalent thought that came to my mind. If there is a benevolent divine being, I believe that divine being is good. And I also believe that that divine being is benevolent, loving, compassionate and caring. Now, you can say, well, I don't understand why there's so much hatred and evil in the world. I get to that, not in this particular uh, video, but I'll get to that at some other point. I agree with you. Those things we have to ask and we have to get those uh, questions answered if we're going to believe in a benevolent God or develop, develop, uh, benevolent divine being. <clears throat> but the point that I'm making for now is that if we believe that, then we also have to accept that what's the purpose of humanity? For us to be an expression of this divine being, this benevolent divine being in creating a better world that perhaps you could say that this divine being wants to express, uh, and I use, I was going to use the word him, but that would just, that doesn't seem right either. And him or her, or we get all tangled up in these things. And it's really minuscule when you think about it. It doesn't really mean anything. What I'm saying is, is uh, the pronouns are not as important as the truth behind it. Um, and so, so the point that I'm making is this, that, that if we want to consider what a divine being, uh, the purpose, the vision behind the universe, if there is a vision, if there is a greater purpose for everything, we, we would then have to assume that it is to express this formless consciousness, if we define God as that, or if we define this divine being as formless consciousness, we have to assume that it is that the material world would express the very essence of this divine being. And if you believe in a benevolent, loving God, that would be love. If you believe in a, a consciousness that is able, as was Jesus said, I'm in the, I'm in the prisoner, I'm in the naked, I'm in them. And in it, then it is to, to be able to see ourselves in one another, to love your neighbor as they would be you, love your neighbor as yourself love them as they would be you. That would be the very essence then of this, of, of the purpose for our life. And so that's where we would begin. That's where we begin this dialogue and talking about these bigger concepts and talking about God and, and who we are, and where do we fit in. And so that's the goal of what I'm trying to accomplish with all of this is to not to tell you this is this is the way it is. This is just to, to give you some other mental concept that you can wrap your head around and say, well, this is, I believe this, I believe that, I don't believe that, I don't agree with that, for something to argue. I'm not looking for an argument. I'm just looking to raise questions uh, that would somehow or another elevate who you are and elevate the plan for your life and elevate what we do together and, and somehow or another make the world a better place for more people. And uh, we, we may not change the world completely in one day, but we can all be part of being those ambassadors and being those um, uh, people who will express more of kindness and love and generosity toward others. So that gives you a little bit of a, and I probably ramble on, um, I didn't prepare this, so I, I just I just want to share a little bit about what I've been thinking about as far as what's the purpose for what we do to help people. So I, I know some people may question, have all kinds of different questions, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to try to answer some of those later on. But for now, I just want you to see this. My entire goal is for all of us to become whole to the point where we make the world a better place.